Hello aspirants, I welcome you all to daily newspaper analysis of Shankar IAS Academy. Today's date is 21st of October 2024. We have taken articles from yesterday's newspaper as well. So without any delay, let us look into the list of articles. So in this first article, we will be seeing about Kalatia Bay. In the second article, we will be seeing about Kala Azad. And in the third article, we will be seeing about Quad. We will be seeing all the articles from the prelims perspective. So without any delay, let us get into the news article discussion. Now take a look at this news article. This news article talks about International Container Transshipment Port ICTP. It is at Galatia Bay in Great Nicobar. So this particular project is part of Great Nicobar Island Development Project. We have already made a shots in this particular topic. So can, you can visit that topic in shots and you can get the background of what is this Great Nicobar Island Development Project is about. But for this article discussion, we are going to confine our discussion to I ICTP alone. So this ICTP is very significant because it will be India's 12th major port. So here you can get a confusion. What is this difference between major port and minor port? So major port, it is handled by central government and minor port, it is handled by state government. This is a very basic dis difference between this major port and minor port. Apart from this, it also aligned with India's Maritime Vision 2030 and Amrit Kal Vision 2047. So these two are the very significance of this particular ICTP project. So now let's get into a further detailed analysis of this ICTP. See, as I said earlier, the very purpose of this ICTP is to bring smoother container transshipment between domestic and global ports. Now this port provides this smooth container transfer because it is located only 40 nautical mile from major international sea route. Here you can see that major international sea route. So it is only 40 nautical mile away from this particular international sea route. Apart from this, it has deep water channel and large berth for big cargo vessels. Here deep water channel means the area can accommodate even larger ships as well without devastating any natural resources in that particular area. Okay. Now moving on, let us see some of other significance. See India's 75 percentage of transshipment cargo actually happens in foreign ports. Here foreign ports in the sense it happens in Colombo, it happens in Klang and it happens in Singapore. So when this ICTP comes, India will not rely on the, these foreign ports. So we can say that this project actually reduces the reliance on foreign ports and also position India as a key trade hub. Apart from this, not only aligning our India's need, but it will also favor other countries' needs because it is just 40 nautical mile away from a international sea route, as I said earlier. So it helps for India and international route as well. Going on, let us see the benefits from this particular project. See, it provides economic benefits. For example, it brings a lot of FDI and it helps a lot of foreign exchange as it boosts a lot of port activities. Secondly, it brings in a lot of job and growth in the particular region and lead to regional development. So with this note, let us see about the project status. See, currently environmental and stage one forest clearance has been approved. So this project will be taking place in different phases. Phase 1 will be operational by 2028 with a capacity of 4 million TEUs reaching 16 million by 2058. So this is what the current status of this particular project. So, so far we saw about this ICTP and we saw what are all the significance of this particular project and we saw the current status of this particular project. So this note, let us try to solve a prelims question. Let me read out the question for you. Which of the following ecosystems are found in the Andaman and Nicobar Islands? See here, the correct answer for the question is option D, all of the above. So with these learned points, now let us move on to the next news article discussion. Take a look at this news article. This news article talks about Kala Azar. The news is that India has asked for certification from World Health Organization WHO for eliminating Kala Azar. So in this news article discussion, let us revise about Kala Azar from the prelims perspective. Before that, we shall see some of the basic understanding that you have to remember. See, this Kala Azar is actually a zoonotic disease, meaning the pathogen that is causing this particular disease gets originated from an animal. So here the reservoir is dogs. 
And again, Kala Azar is actually a neglected tropical disease. So if you know what is a neglected tropical disease, leave that in the comment section. In India, we have recorded only one case in 10,000 cases for consecutively two years. This is the reason why we have asked for a certification from World Health Organization that India is Kala Azar free. So we saw that dog is the reservoir for this particular pathogen, right? So this pathogen is actually transmitted by a species called sandfly. This sandfly is actually common in districts or states like Bihar, Jharkhand, Uttar Pradesh and West Bengal. They are common in these places because of the temperature and humidity and they actually breed where the soil is very moisture and rich in nutrient. So sandflies, they are similar to mosquitoes. They feed on human blood as well as the dog's blood. So the transmission cycle works like this. When the sandfly just bites a dog, it gets the pathogen inside the body of the mosquito. And when this mosquito again bites a healthy person, it gets transmitted from this dog to the healthy person. And this is one form of cycle, transmission cycle. And the second form is that this infected person, when he is bitten by a sandfly, the sandfly gets infected and this will be transmitted to another human being through this sandfly. So these two are the transmission cycle and the most important fact that you have to remember is here the pathogen is actually a protozoan that is parasitic in nature. So this is the main difference between common disease malaria and this Kala Azar. So malaria is caused by a virus. Here the vector is actually mosquito but here it is a protozoan and the vector is sandfly and remember only the female sandflies they feed on human blood in order to lay eggs but the male they will just feed on some fruit plant juice and sugary secretions this is similar between mosquito and sandfly now moving on remember this human to human transmission of kala azar is very rare here human to human transmission in the sense we cannot transmit through touch or we cannot transmit through blood transfusion and etc. There are cases, but it is rarest of the rare. So what are the symptoms here? here? Some of the symptoms include fever, weight loss, fatigue, an enlarged spleen, liver and anemia. So what this protozoan actually does is when it enters into our body, it suppresses our immune and affects our blood cells. So when blood cells are not there, it leads to organ failure and leads to anemia and enlargement of organs in some cases. So if this is left untreated, it can lead to death as well. So talking about the prevention and control, early diagnosis and effective prompt treatment is the first step. And secondly, we have to work on vector control. We have to keep ourselves safe from the bite of any sandfly or a mosquito bite. Apart from this, we have to keep a surveillance on the disease because we actually know when this disease can turn into an epidemic or a pandemic and we know that and we know the seasons, right? So with that, we can create a database and keep a surveillance on this particular disease. And finally, we have to work on providing awareness to the people through social mobilization and we can strengthen partnerships and avoid the spread of this particular disease. See, in rural area, it is very common that people use or people lay in the underground. This is also a reason for spread of this particular disease. So generating awareness of this particular things can prevent the spread of the particular disease. So moving on, let us see about the treatment for Kalaza. These three are the, some of the anti-drugs that can be used to reduce the Kala Azar disease. So it is treatable and we can prevent it as well. So with this understanding, let us try to solve a prelims question. So what is the correct answer for this particular question? The correct answer is option B214 only. First statement and third statement is incorrect. So with these learned points, now let us move on to the next news article discussion. Now look at this article about quad. Quad expansion is quadrilateral security dialogue. So the news is that naval ships of the member countries, which includes India, US, Australia and Japan, has come together for the Malabar exercise 2024. This is what the news article is about. So in this news article discussion, let us revise about quad from the prelims perspective. Before that, let us see about the origin and evolution of this quad to have a better understanding about this particular forum. See, quad was emerged after 2004 Indian Ocean tsunami. So the main focus of this forum was to coordinate disaster relief and 
laid down a foundation for broader security collaboration, particularly in the Indo-Pacific region. So the member countries include India, Japan, Australia and United States. Now let us see who made the proposal. See, in 2007, this proposal was actually made by Zenzo Abe, who is Japanese Prime Minister. So the proposal was actually driven by concerns over China's influence in the Indo-Pacific region. So after the proposal was initiated by Japanese Prime Minister, the grouping was formed, but Australia withdrew in 2008 due to the pressure put by China. So the formal Quad Dialogue became inactive after the withdrawal of Australia in 2008. But when all the four countries they met together again in uh, Asian Summit in November 2017, it led to the revival of this particular forum. And all of them had the common concern of China's assertiveness in the South China Sea and Indian Ocean. So this is the very brief background of Quad origin and its evolution. Now let us quickly go through the functions of Quad. See, the first important function of Quad is to provide for a free, open and inclusive Indo-Pacific region. So, this will ensure freedom of navigation and overflight within the country without interfered by any other particular stronger country. Secondly, is to strengthen regional security and prevent any kind of illegal activities. And thirdly, to bring in economic coordination. So, by providing security for trade, they are trying to promote economic interest of the country in the particular region. So it also focuses on strengthening infrastructure, bringing in investment and supply chain resilience as well. Apart from this, they also focus on emerging technologies like coordinating on artificial intelligence, bringing in 5G, then quantum computing and biotechnology in the region of maritime security. Apart from this, they focus on humanitarian assistance and disaster relief when any kind of natural disaster happen in the region. So they actually coordinate, they share information and they provide humanitarian aid after the disaster as well. So these are certain functions of Quad. Now let us quickly go through some of the important outcomes of Quad. See the first thing is this exercise Malabar 2024. See priorly also there were certain exercises. This showcases interoperability between the four member countries. Secondly, the Quad Cancer Moonshoot Initiative. See, this is an expanded cancer screening and HPV vaccination initiative that is happening in the Indo-Pacific region. So, through this initiative, expertise and knowledge and the data set will be shared between the countries to reduce the prevalence of these deadly diseases. And thirdly, they have expanded Indo-Pacific Partnership for Maritime Domain Awareness. This is to ensure maritime security in the particular region. Apart from this, they have launched the Indo-Pacific Logistic Network Pilot in order to improve the disaster response. And they have also made progress on diversifying clean energy sources like solar, hydrogen and batteries and etc. So these are all the so these are all certain outcomes of Quad that you have to remember. So, so far we saw about Quad and we saw about its origin, member countries, then we saw about uh, some of its function and some of the very important outcomes. So, with these learned points, let us solve a prelims question. Is the Quadrilateral Security Dialogue Quad a formal or informal alliance? So, the correct answer for this question is option B, informal strategic forum with no binding obligation. So, this is what Quad is about. So we didn't discuss that in the article. That is why a prelims question has been asked on this. So with this, we came to the end of the news article discussion. If you like the video, hit like, do comment. And don't forget to subscribe to Shankarai's Academy YouTube channel. Now, thank you so much for listening.